All right, boys and girls, I wanted to do this extra little quick video um, now that we have gone through the first two parts of the book, um, been looking at your quizzes and looking at your answers, and hopefully you are receiving those. I've been sending those back to you, um, giving you the opportunity to take them again, and as I have been, um, sorry, as I have been looking at things, I thought, you know what, let's do a quick, because if we were meeting together and reading this book together, we would be talking and going through some information and summarizing and doing some things. So I wanted to go through a couple of things, um, kind of from the beginning to, to now, some um, information and make sure that you are getting those main points and, and maybe understanding what's going on the story, in the story a little bit. So hopefully by now you have figured out that the story is being told by Red, who is what? You're right, a mighty oak tree. And his best friend, Bongo the Crow. How in the world did a crow get a name like Bongo? It's because he loves the sound of the bongo drums. They have one really important rule. Mrs. Millet wouldn't be able to follow that rule very well. But what is that rule? Don't talk to people. So Red and Bongo live happily in, Bongo lives in Red because he's a tree and they have a lot of other animals and creatures that live there together and the rule that makes it very easy for them to all live together, all the animals and creatures and, and everything else is that their rule is do not kill and eat your neighbors. It's probably a good rule to live by, isn't it? <laughs> So as the story goes on, we learn that Red is over two decades old. We actually learn that, and if you know anything about trees, that their rings around them indicate how old they are. And Red, at the time of our story, has 216 rings, meaning that he is 216 years old. Um, as we go along, we meet a very shy, quiet girl, and her name is... Samar. Um, she likes to hang out late at night um, and sit underneath Red and the animals all come and visit her and she um, just kind of takes it in and enjoys nature and, and does a lot of really deep thinking. And at one point Bongo gives her a gift of some bottle caps, a gold ribbon, and a Monopoly token. Um, the baby animals come out every night and visit with Samar, and the one thing that Samar um, wishes for, because she is sitting under Red, who is a wishing tree. Um, what's the one thing that she wishes for? And that's a friend. I think especially now, I'm going to challenge you, reach out to a friend, because I think a lot of us are feeling lonely. We're in our homes and with our families, which is wonderful. But I know from emails and our chats that you're all missing your friends. So reach out to your friends. Say hello, whether you Google chat, send them a letter, um, an email, do something. Reach out to your friends because we know how very important having our friends is. Red has a favorite saying, and it's pretty profound. Um, if you read Wonder, this was a text connection I made, um, when we read Wonder, there were, um, oh goodness, Mrs. Mullet just forgot the word she was thinking of. Um, anyways, it will come to me. <laughs> um, anyways, there was something that Red, say, that Red says a lot, and it really is his theme, his motto, his mantra, which he says, stand tall and reach deep. And I think right now, class, this is something we really need to do. We're in times that we've never really done before, and now is a good time to stand tall, stand up, be strong, and dig deep, reach deep. And I think we're doing that with our families and the connections we're making with our families. And he believes that a fine way to spend your day is to make others feel safe. And I think right now we are finding that we're finding ways to spread kindness and to spread happiness. So I think we could also live as Red is living. 
So then we get to part two of the story and we learn about some people. We learn about Wish Day and we learn about Bongo and Red's feelings about the people and Wish Day. Um, Bongo feels like people are greedy and they're just such a bother and he's very pessimistic, meaning he's not positive about it at all. He does not think that Wishing Day should happen and just is bothered by it all. Red, on the other hand, is happy to see that people are hopeful and that he feels like they're wishing for things that'll that were make things better or better their lives and better the pe the um, the people and things around him. Where who owns the wish tree? Can you really own a wish tree? Can you own a tree? You can if it's on your property, and that is um, Red does have an owner because he is growing on the property she owns and her name is Francesca. And it just so happens that later in the story we learn a really sad part of the book, uh, of the story, and that is that a boy comes along and carves what appears to be a really mean word into Red's bark. And that word is L-E-A-V-E, -E, leave, all in capital letters. What does it mean? No one's certain at this point, but they do believe that it is aimed at a particular family that lives in the neighborhood. Um, and that family is Samar. And why wouldn't Samar and her family be welcome in the community? It's because people believe that they're different, that their culture and their beliefs are different. Because you may remember this, it was just a very short part of the book and it will come into play a little bit later, but they are Muslims which has to do with their religious beliefs and their culture. And so other people in the neighborhood obviously feel like that they do not belong, that they're not allowed. Um, Samar reminds Red of Francesca's great-grandmother. And if you go back and read that part, she kind of, he kind of tells why. Um, and then it comes to Bongo gives Samar another gift. Bongo, for being loud and, and pessimistic like he is, he sure loves Samar. Um, and he gives her another gift. He gives her a tiny silver key attached to a faded um, ribbon. And what do you think that key goes to? Does it go to anything? Is it just something as a crow he has picked up and put in his stash? Think about that. So Red being so wise and a thinker, he often wonders if he's done enough for the world that he lives in. Do we also do that as leaders at Riverside and leaders in our community and, and leaders in our family? Do we often wonder if we've done enough good? Ask yourself, and this is a great time to reach out and do that. Do, do some good in the world. Do some good in your neighborhood and even in your homes. I've seen some pictures of people leaving messages on sidewalks and chalk. I've seen letters and signs posted in windows. So you are doing good in the world, boys and girls. Um, Red often wonders what it would be like to have a more active role in what's going on. Red stands there and sees all of these things all the time going on, and yet hmm, there's not much he can do. He can't talk to them, and he can't get up and move around and interact. So wonders oftentimes if what it would be like to be able to do more. And then the question that he asks Bongo, Bongo was not happy about being awoken from a sleep, but wonders how friendships happen. Think about that. How have you made friends in the past? What makes a friendship happen? Does it just happen? Is it because you have things in common with people? Is it why? How do friendships happen? I want you to think about that. Red's been watching Samar and Stefan. Um, and one day he saw a look in Stefan's eye and said, I know that look, he has a wish. Um, Red starts getting restless and fidgety because he wants to help Samar. That's just who he is. Red is a good tree. Um, I think Red really shows some amazing leadership skills. Even with his limited abilities, he can't really talk, he can't move, but yet he is finding ways to try and be proactive and he's very sensitive to other people's feelings and things. I want you to think about how could Red help Samar? What wish is in Stefan's eye? What's going to happen 
do you think? I want you to make some predictions. I want you to think about it. And I hope you have a wonderful, happy spring recess. Spend some time with your families. Don't worry about working on Friday or Monday. And next Tuesday, I will have part three of our book. There are five parts. So you have made it through part two. So also reach out to me if you would like to redo the quiz for section one or section two after you went, oh yeah, that's right. Um, email Mrs. Millet, even Mrs. Dunbar's class, you can email me and I will resend the quiz one or quiz two out to you so that you can look at that again. Um, I hope you're enjoying the book as much as I am, and I'll see you next week.